So as you can see, we've got four linked databases. Plants, where you can see all of your plants. Locations, where you can list the sites in your garden. Maybe you'll plant something there. Observations, where you can see what you've observed of a plant. And actions, where you can log what you've done to a plant. So if we go back to plants, here's the full list of plants currently in this plant database. We're currently on grid view. This is what the client prefers. It's not my preference, but you can see all of the details this way. So now if we look at a plant record, you can see some of the fields within this that you can add information to or customise or completely change if you want. You can also link it up to other aspects of the database. Let's look at one which is a bit more filled in. So as you can see, Aporocactus 1, this has got a picture and some of the information has been inputted into this. It's also been linked up to the locations and the observations database, although there's nothing on the actions front there yet. You can see we've got different views in Airtable, so this is calendar view and we're viewing this plant according to when it was first acquired. There's not enough data to show this yet, but the idea is that you can track elements of the garden over time. There are also other ways you can view things in the calendar, and you can look at things in gallery view, which is my personal favourite because it's nice and visual, and Kanban view, which is just another way of sorting your data. So now let's look at the locations database. We've got not only plant sites listed, but areas just in the garden which the client might have future plans for and might want to develop a little bit. And you can even show and hide the fields within that record. We've also got conservatory, this one's a bit more filled out, so you can see there's a few pictures in there, and that's all of the plants that are currently in the conservatory. We've also got a few observations in there which are linked to the plants within that space. Now on the observations database you can log things you've seen on your plants, so for example if it's wilting, if it's got termites on it, if it's flowering, then you can log that all down in the observations section. And then in the actions database you can log what you've done to a plant, so maybe you've repotted it, maybe you've watered it, maybe you've done something that it's worth noting down and linking up. One of the cool things about the pro version of Airtable is that you can add apps. So I've added in this search app, which basically lets you do an advanced search through all of the records in your database to locate specific notes. You can also customise the database to have plant death highlighting, as I like to call it. So if you tick the death box, then a red line shows up on that plant. If you untick the death box, then it just goes back to looking like a regular plant. So that's a nice visual way to see which plants are surviving and which aren't doing so well. Let's recap. The core cool features of this garden database involve the four linked databases, the flexible data views, custom data fields, searchable notes for the entire database, and custom visuals. I'm sure you can do a lot more with our table if you really want to, but this is what met the requirements for my particular client's project. Happy gardening!